Hello, piloteers, or whatever it is you would like to be called. Uh, this is Sarah. Uh, due to gestures broadly, we needed a little more time with our next Snick at Night episode. But worry not, we have a special bonus episode that we have been holding on to for just such an occasion. Uh, we recorded it last winter as a custom episode for our awesome fan, Jerry. Thank you very much, Jerry, for uh, inciting us to watch this show. So I uh, hope you all enjoy this, and we will be back in two more weeks with... Don't tell anyone I told you this. Gilligan's Island. Take it away, past us. Hi, I'm Sarah Shea. And I'm Strangely Duesberg. Welcome to the Pilot House. A podcast where we watch all the shows we missed the first time around. Try to figure out where the heck they were going with this. So Sarah, what do you know about Ted Lasso? I know pretty much exactly what you told me about it. I had never heard of the show mm -hmm. until it was requested. And yes, this is a special request. Uh, we are record. We'll be recording this up. That was some good Foley work. I'm not editing yeah. that out. It's going. It's going in the folder. I made. A, I made a whole folder for like funny moments and weird, weird mouth noises and things that someday we'll use. Anyway, our wonderful fan has requested that we watch this episode and has in fact paid for the privilege yes folks you too can force us to watch a show that you want us to talk about and we will give you the file before anyone else gets to hear it for the low low price of mm, email us <laughs> we'll talk so yeah i had never heard of this weirdly enough since we decided we we're going to do it for the podcast I have heard lots of references to it on the internet. Seems like people are talking about it more. Maybe the second season got a mm -hmm. little more buzz or whatever. As far as I know, it is about an American guy who moves to England to coach a football team? Right. Soccer? He's a, he's a football team. Fo I mean, fo <clears throat> football, football team. The he's a team unto himself. <laughs> he's an American football coach who gets a job in the UK teaching... British football, f f right? Coaching British football, but, but he is okay. So he's not a soccer coach who goes to no. He's a football to football I'm, to football, except different different footballs. So this grew out of, I believe it was. I'm not. I'm not a big sports ball. Oh, and the main guy is an actor that I uh, have seen in things and don't particularly care for, but I'm like I'm open to being convinced of otherwise. Yeah. Can't remember his name. Jason Sudeikis. That's the one. So I'm not a big sports person, but. I believe this series grew out of what was initially like kind of a one one off gag. Uh, ESPN had like some comedy bumpers, sort of like I, I vaguely think it sort of was like how Adult Swim will do those late night like little thirty second goofs on their shows and things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, and ESPN made these bumpers because I think it was there was there was something like ESPN was going to start covering the American Football League or something you know like uh, soccer. It was like they were going to add soccer to the ESPN lineup or soccer was coming somewhere or some, there was some sort of connection. And so they had this gag about like, oh, Americans don't know what football is. So it's kind of like this like one off one note joke yeah. thing where they made these like little 30 second comedy shorts. I've seen a couple of them. I, I don't remember, though, if they were just bumpers or commercials for something or whatever. But I saw some of those back in the day and I, I was just like, OK, ha ha. Yeah. But then to hear that they've spun a whole show out of it, like clearly somebody was compelled by this idea like to the, build story around. So this, this was recent, and Jason Sudeikis was in the things, or he was in the commercials. Okay. Yeah, right. the, like wow. recent, as in within the last decade. Oh, I think okay. it took a while oh. to spin it up to a, a show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Interesting. But I, I don't really know anything about what the nuts and bolts of the actual show is yeah. other than the fact that it spun out of this these commercials yeah yeah i definitely don't know anything more about it i've definitely heard some people talk about the show and mention things i mean i i think it's a comedy it's not like a drama about mm -hmm. an american football coach moving to england uh but yeah i don't know whether he's coaching an adult team a professional team a kids team i have no idea i don't know what the other characters are like i yeah, no, no, I've got nothing else. But um, I, I confess when I heard the premise, I think I asked you, like, hey, um, have you heard of this show? Jerome wants us to watch no. it. You were like, 
oh, yeah, it's been on my radar. And I'm like, oh, okay, cool. And you were like, yeah, um, it's uh, Jason Tudakis. And I was like, uh-huh. Is a football coach. Uh-huh. <laughs> Who moves to England? I'm listening. Yeah. <laughs> was like, okay, you've got me. Yeah. I, I am a file of those Anglos. <laughs> but, yeah, I, 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 I'm, I guess I'm going into this like, we'll see. I'm mm-hmm. not super sold on Jason Sudeikis. I don't particularly care about sports. Right. So, we'll see. I, I would love to be pleasantly surprised, and it turns out I freaking love it. and It's totally in my wheelhouse. Well, uh, let's steer... This pilot house to that wheelhouse. What? Let's go watch Ted Lasso. Okay. <clears throat> okay. All right. How y'all doing? Okay. So, uh, hey, why don't we just jump right in? Anybody got any questions? Oh yeah. No, she saw that coming. Uh, you know what? You can put your hands down real quick. Um, How about I go ahead and address the larger than average elephant in the room? No, I have never coached the sport that you folks call football. Heck, you could fill two internets with what I don't know about football. (laughs) But I'll tell you what I do know. I know that AFC Richmond, like any team I've ever coached, is going to go out there and give you everything they got for all four quarters. Hobbs. What was that? Two halves. Oh, right. Sorry. Halves, yeah. They're going to give you everything they got for two halves, win or lose. Or tie. Right, y'all do ties here. Sorry, that's going to take some getting used to for me, okay? (laughs) So we just watched the first episode of Ted Lasso, and I feel like I've been kicked in the stomach. I was, like, not expecting everything that we just got. Oh, I I was also not expecting it, but I don't feel like I was kicked in the stomach. I just, yeah, I mean, I was was expecting something so different. Me too. To get, like, some emotional whatever, but, like, the emotional punch of the end of that episode was, like, one of the hardest left turns into (laughs) dramatic territory I have taken in a while. Yeah. Okay, okay. I was like, wait, did you you not like it? No, you... The ending that was just a lot. Yeah. I now totally understand why people like this show. Like, it it may not hold this, but in terms of a pilot, I'm like, shit, yes. Holy shit, yeah. yeah. No, I mean, I said I was prepared to have my mind changed or prepare to be pleasantly surprised and boy that pilot is so much uh, it's it's weird because early in the episode i thought to myself man this is you know in a weird way this is just like jaws we just finished watching jaws uh-huh. one of the things that hit us with jaws was that um so many things we expected to happen then went a different way and i attributed that in to it's an older film but this did the same thing yeah like in a different in a very very different way of course but like a lot of things i expected to happen it just went a different way with it and i was every time i was pleasantly surprised and i was thinking oh, it's just like jaws in such a weird way who would have thought this show would remind me of jaws and then they make a jaws reference yeah that was like uncanny I was oh like, my god wow. i was like i pointed at you i was like that was amazing. Yeah, it's like last time I saw something this mean, it was facing down against Roy Scheider. Yeah. And Beard goes, Jaws? No, all that jazz. I don't get that reference because I have not seen all that jazz, but I really want to see it. So, uh, I mean, in terms of the what we know, we we did, we were correct in yeah. sort of the, the general premise. Yeah. On one hand, at first I was like, oh, so he's a manager. He's a team manager. And there's the second character that's the coach. But everyone in the episode, aside from him, acted like he was the coach. Yeah. So I don't know if that's one of the funny things about, like, they don't have a manager and a coach in in UK sports, maybe. Right. They just have a coach. So no one sees the difference Yeah. between the two. I'm not going to lie. I don't really know the difference between... I don't know what a team manager does. I feel like a fish out of water in terms of talking about sports stuff. Yeah. <laughs> let's talk about this pilot. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So one sentence synopsis. I, it was pretty much what we gave in the what we know. Yeah. Like, and yet that does not co- begin to cover what's going on. An, um, uh, an American minor league football coach gets brought to the UK to coach a major 
League's football team. Yeah. English football team. Yeah, a Premier League. Premier League. They call it. Uh, But yeah, on the strength of being a kind of like a viral internet meme for like doing a funny dance. And also he took a mediocre team and, you know, brought them to success in their, at their level, the college level, right? It's like the college team. And then... Uh, yeah, and the, the, you know, the, the new, and we didn't know why he was brought over or any of that, but, yeah. um, nothing, nothing in the episode was like, oh, okay, I was actually wrong about that. There was so much I didn't expect, but yeah. nothing that I was actually, like, misinformed about. So, should we just get into kind of a recap? Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I don't feel a lot of need to break this down scene by scene, but. No, no. But, um. We don't do that anymore. But the we do we we never speak of those days. <laughs> but yeah, I just sorry, I'm like still like my brain is going all these different directions because yeah. of how different this was from what I expected. And I guess like let's let's yeah that that first scene with the 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 um the woman what is I totally am blanking on her name the the um the team owner oh Rebecca Rebecca. I'm going to just quick peek. Yeah, at the, yeah. I'm going to quick peek at Imdaba. I've got <laughs> Miss, it open here. Miss, uh, Miss Watson, please call me Rebecca. Yeah. Miss Watson is Re- my father. Oh. If that's a joke, I love it. If it's not, I can't wait to unpack that with you. <laughs> Re- Rebecca Walton. Uh, Walton. Uh, I was so close. Like, right out of the gate, this show was... I, I was like, okay. Like, you got this, like, woman, like, she's she owns the team now because she got it in the divorce from yeah, her yeah. ex-husband. Yeah, yeah, we get that uh, uh, set out pretty quickly. Is that how it starts? Isn't yeah. there something else? It's her firing the, uh, it's her firing the, yeah, the I guess former it, it, guy. It, who it, they, I think they show the team playing, practicing. Yeah. Excuse me, training. Yeah. God, gotta get used to that. Yeah, uh, yeah they, they show some shots of the team yeah. training and then they go. Yeah, so... Yeah, she fires the current coach. We find out she just got the team in a divorce. Mm-hmm. She has a tablet on her desk. He got the bozos. She or he he gets the bimbos. She gets the bozos. Mm-hmm. So she gets this football team that is pretty. They're they're a professional. They're they're Premier League, but they're not very successful. Yeah, it's they're, they're kind of like the bottom middling. of their league. Well, they, but they're not like a ragtag band of misfits. They're not no, like they're, the underdogs per se, but they're, they're... The bottom of their, cl- their class, yeah. their league. Well, everyone, she, she describes them as mediocre. Not bad, just mediocre. Yeah. I love that they scene where a, she, at, at the press coverage, she's yeah. like, mediocre. And everyone goes like, whoa, well, she's she like, am, am I wrong? wrong? And she looks at a guy who's like, well, I mean, it's a bit... Am I wrong? No. No. <laughs> it's just like... She's intense. But and yeah, she, she says, she fires the coach and it's like, uh, her assistant is like, uh, do you need any suggestions about, and she's like, oh, that won't be necessary. And so we get, okay, so she already picked out Ted yeah. and it goes to a classic cut to the news, giving yeah. us some exposition. And it's the it's the bald guy from Sports Center, and he's like... Is that, I was yeah. wondering if he was a real uh, yeah, sports Yeah, he's, he's definitely a real real sportscaster guy and he's like so yeah viral internet sensation ted lasso who you know did did do well great with thing this, this he did great thing team. but now he's being brought to england to do totally different thing yeah i mean good luck uh yeah and then and then we cut to ted being on the plane, flying there. Yeah, and that's the first thing. The first thing we get is like we just see him. He hasn't said anything. We've got nothing of the character except that he has a mustache, big hair, and then this kid goes up and holds up a phone with the still of the the viral oh. video of him dancing, and it's like this you, and he's like, yes sir, that would be me, and he's like, oh, could I get a picture, you know, and everything, and he's just like super friendly and like all right i'm sure thing I'm, well you got a point there <laughs> i'm having a good time and then he talks to the coach that's when we're like wait there's a coach too so they're bringing two people over yeah. that seems weirder i don't know if there's a precedent for that in sports do a manager and a coach often travel together from team to team if they move from one team to another do they usually travel as a pair i don't know if that's a thing i know like a team will have like a general manager like I think that they also call a coach, so like 
Pete Carroll is the guy who coaches the local Seahawks sports ball team. I'm not up on all this. I believe you. Under Pete Carroll, there are other people who are also called coaches. I, I knew who, there like, were coach assistant section. coaches yeah. and stuff, and like I knew there was more than one coach on a team. Yeah. But like at some point, somebody says something insulting about a coach, and Ted turns to Coach Beard and is like, "You're gonna let him talk to you like that?" Yeah. He's like, "I don't think he was talking about me, sir." And like, not sorry, but like, yeah. So he doesn't think of himself as a coach. Right. It seems like the difference between coach and manager not being a distinction that the the Brits understand seems to be something that's going to be a thing. But Mm -hmm. maybe. I don't know. But like his just his good natured sort of like, all right then. You know, this kid says some slightly insulting things. Yeah. Like you're doing this absolutely insane thing. They're going to murder you. But like you're a legend for doing it. And he's like, all right then. He's just super friendly and, and oh my god, when he turns to the coach who's actually reading a book yeah. about UK football yeah. to be to actually learn and he's like, Oh, you reading another one of those books? Alright, hit him with some fun facts and he tells him some stuff and he's like, Wow, really? He's just having such a good time. Yeah. And and makes a bet with him like, Oh, I'm gonna work that into conversation right as soon as we get there, I'll bet you five bucks. Into touch. Into touch, meaning out of bounds. And he yeah. says, like, I'm gonna work that into conversation, bet you five dollars. And then the most adorable thing in the entire episode that this is what clinched the character for me is like, I love this guy is, you know, the overhead, uh, the voice, the, you know, uh, uh, flight attendant says, you know, we will be doing the lights in the cabin. And the coach says, we, you know, we should get some shut eye. And he goes, oh, hey, if we see each other in our dreams, let's go for it. Pretend we don't know each other. And he's like, you got it, stranger. Like the, the, the coach doesn't look at him like this fucking guy or yeah. anything. It's just. They have this very wholesome friendship, even though Coach Beard seems a little more like down to earth and like a yeah. little less uh, cheerful and kind of goofy. But I don't know, just the relentless, cheerful, like friendliness. Yeah. But not in like a forced way. I don't know. I was just immediately like, I love this guy. As uh, Yeah. As much as the character's cheerful positivity is over the top. Yeah. It doesn't feel forced. Like it feels very natural for the character. Yeah. And even when we get some of his, like, emotional backstory or, like, what's going on with him revealed later, it's, yeah. like, it just kind of seems like, I don't know, in terms of setting up the pieces for what's actually going on in terms of making this a longer-running show than just a single gag, Yeah, like, it's such a great move to have him be this just cheerful, kind person, like... It's almost like you you take like a wholesome fifties dad and then drop him in the middle of like a modern kind of like yeah. mean sitcom kind of yeah. world. I, I, it's yeah. just great. He's yeah. It's hard to explain how he's just he's just nice. Yeah. I not. But not like it's not like he's just letting people walk all over him. Yeah. He's just. He seems genuinely like grounded and healthy. <laughs> yeah. And the way he interacts with people and treats other people and just kind of like, even when people say kind of weird stuff or mean stuff, he's just like, okay, you do you. You know, he just like, yeah. he's not, he's a bit unflappable. Like, he doesn't yeah. let anything get to him. And he is a little bit like, is this crazy? Is what we're doing crazy? But he's also like, oh, I think we can, yeah, we can make it work. He's not in denial about, he's not playing the classic American who's just like, yeah, we'll show these Brits how it's done. Yeah, exactly. Like, how, how hard can it be, stupid game, or something like that. He's just like, oh gosh, all right, I'm, I'm here to learn, you know? And he's just like, hey, you know, what I... He says when in the, the press conference thing, he's like, you know, I do not know a lot about your game, as you can tell, but uh, I'm, I do know one thing, and that's helping a team be their best, or something yeah. like that. Something inspirational. But it's, it's like, he makes a good point. Yeah. I don't know. It's... Uh, there, that's the thing is like clearly whatever he is good at in terms of managing teams in his past or whatever yeah. has more to do with his like positive kindness than like some sort of deep tactical mind or anything like that. Yeah. And that's actually like, it's a really fun, it's just a really fun premise that like he's not coming in with all this tactical know-how. He's coming in like clearly as someone who's able to bring people together. Yeah. And it's just... I, I'm so endeared to the character already. Like, he's just so endearing. Yeah. And, like, he has that moment where he, like, he he sees the, the field, the pitch. 
he walks in he walks and, like touches the grass and he's like feels different i mean the same but different and coach is like is that a metaphor and he goes you know it <laughs> just i don't yeah. know it's it's uh, and, and then it's the... so I can't, what's the what other word is there but just wholesome yeah, like he's and so then wholesome. and then when the guy's like oh no you can't be on the grass and oh sorry are you the coach okay but you have to get off the grass it's like I don't know, that same scene with more or less the same structure could have been way more, like, awkward. Ooh, yeah. that's that's a thing. Something I absolutely hate that is in so many popular shows is um, people being awkward or making mistakes, um, being in awkward, uncomfortable situations. Cringe. I, yes. Cringe humor. I hate yeah. cringe humor. I absolutely... I, not only do I not find it funny, I find it difficult to watch, which is why I've only seen one episode of, well, a lot of shows, but the one I was trying to Shit's think of. Creek. No, um, well, yeah, but the one with the, the how how much could a banana cost? Then was... Arrested Development. Thank you. And that is why I've only seen one episode of Arrested Development. Could not handle that. That is, Arrested Development was like, oh, somebody made a perfect example, a pitch perfect mwah, chef's kiss example of the kind of humor I cannot tolerate. And, and this, this show didn't have any of it. Ab- well, this show is absolutely constantly setting up those situations. Yeah. But then what the reversal is, is that the person who should feel awkward and should just like d- dissolve into a puddle on the floor and like of self-loathing. Yeah. Does not just react goes, that well, way. Well, all right then. Yeah. yeah. The, this show, same premise, all the same characters, more or less the same script could have been played as that cringe humor. Yeah. And it's not. And it was like a breath of fresh air while someone is giving you a hug and also you smell warm chocolate chip cookies while you take in the fresh air. Yeah. I didn't get a chocolate chip cookie. Did you eat mine? That's not part of the story. <laughs> and that moment on when he meets the, the guy in the field, uh, Nathan, the character's mm-hmm. name, uh, and he asks Nathan his name and Nathan's like, no one ever asked my name. And he's like, well, that's it. You know? You, he waits. Yeah. Whenever you're ready. <laughs> and uh, then later, they're like, wave at him, and he looks behind him, and he's like, me? And they're like, yes, you're the only person here we've here. met. So yes, I'm waving to you. And then he's like, how's it going, Nathan? You remember my name. Like, that part was a little bit... His his absolute, utter disbelief uh, was maybe a bit much for me, but like, I'll let it go. I mean, it is something where when you meet people that you don't expect to remember your name, like, it feels really yeah. good to have... Your name remembered, and I like that they. I actually really liked how big of a deal they made out of that because mm. that. Well, he warmed up to it, yeah. and then he like he's goofing off with them at the end with the thing with the horn and everything. <laughs> like, and yeah, and that's something that they 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 really built a lot of. God, I can't believe this is only a thirty minute pilot. Yes, they again, built, they built so much storytelling into already showing how Ted makes people feel. Yeah. So not not just Nathan. He has the interaction with Ivy, the girl oh, girlfriend. Oh, I thought it was like Josie. Keely. <laughs> we were both wrong. Hey, we so he both thought that it ended with an E. He has the interaction with Keely where, you know, he's polite to her when she shows up, and he's not oogling her. You know, yeah, she's yeah. clearly like Cass is like bazinga. You know, like that's yeah. clearly the type of character they're going for. Um, and then you see like in one of the the player's locker, the player's dating her in his locker. He's got like a centerfold of her. Like, yeah. I think she's she's meant to have been a, um, there's was it, like the page three models or whatever. Oh, in right. The, the yeah. Sun. Yeah. They have like the sexy, la- like naked lady on page three or whatever. But then Ted Lasso like sees that and he, he has his uh, gaff tape and he, yeah. He, so he covers her boobs. He covers her boobs. It's very wholesome. I- and then she sees that later and it's like, She's a little bit, like, keeping him at a distance. Yeah. And then she sees that, and she instantly goes, like, oh, this guy's just a fucking wholesome yeah. little teddy bear. And then she warms up to him, like, right away. And then she's like, okay, I'll help you put up that sign. But then... She helps him put it up crooked. It's still it's crooked. It's exactly yeah. in the same spot, I'm pretty sure. Which, I, I no, assume... It's, it's crooked slanted the other way it's slanted the other yeah. way oh okay that's hilarious i thought it was the same and i love when she's like sign's crooked and he's like i oh, hear i was thinking it was the room yeah <laughs> like it's just everything i assumed he was doing it on purpose because he was trying to evoke a uh, sign up at, in the high school yeah, yeah you know vibe uh and and maybe that was but he didn't try to explain that he just yeah. makes a little joke like oh you got me uh, i was actually curious about her I wasn't clear what her 
relationship was supposed to be. Like, is she supposed to be that guy's girlfriend? Because their banter didn't seem like relationship oh. banter. I mean, that was the that was the read that I got on the situation. Yeah, it was just weird because he was like, "Oh, and I made I made an appointment with her to get wax," and I was like, "Oh, is she like his stylist or something? Does he have a stylist?" But then she comes back. It's like, "Oh, he's getting wax," so I came back to get something. He left, and I'm like, "So she's not? Is she? What is she?" But the whole like, "Oh, you're gonna be a gentleman now?" Like, "Oh no, I you know I'll walk in front of me so that I could look at your ass," and she says like, "Uh." look at it and weep or something like that yeah. i don't know it's just like a very the banter made me go like are they in a relationship also his outfit was a choice oh i mean that, that that's some like particular type of london street fashion oh is it oh, okay yeah. okay I've, I've definitely seen that out and about i was like okay i i've seen all of these individual things on, like, fashion people on the internet. Right. I've never seen someone in person dressed like this. Especially not someone who is, like, a successful athlete. Like, they mentioned that he's, like, one of the best players on the team, right? Yeah. Yes. And, yeah, he's, like, okay, that's a, that's a floral, a shiny floral sport Tracksuit. Tracksuit. Thank yeah. you. Sport. That's like sport suit. That's not what it's called. Tracksuit. Um, a fanny pack worn crossbody. Mm-hmm. That's the thing. Okay. And a snapback. He had and, a snapback. And a snapback, of course, with the letters icon, the word icon in silver letters. Yeah. That seemed perfect, right? Fuck boy style. Yeah. The the tra- the floral tracksuit and the fanny pack was like, is this character supposed to be gay? <laughs> Apparently that's a thing now. Yeah. I do know that florals are more popular now yeah. for men than they have been in the past. Yeah. Um, straight men wear florals with absolute uh, abandon these days. Yeah. But it's, it's very confusing and deeply troubling to me. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> that uh, is our fabric. Uh, the 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 yeah. But he just has this lovely interaction with with, with Keely and mm-hmm. and even the people who are you know, initially resistant to him. It's like, it just doesn't seem to phase him. Like, yeah. When people are kind of rude. The the whole episode, I think that the, the thing where I was like, okay, this is what we're going to be doing long term was, and I, I kind of wondered if it was a producer's, if, um, if it was going to be a producer's thing where it's like, he is being hired on purpose to fail. Like he is the most mm. ridiculous option. Right. Right. I didn't. I didn't get that. I oh. didn't. I didn't predict that. I had wondered, based on the just like this like stone cold ice bitch character that yeah. we were initially well, set up with. I was Rebecca. confused. I was like, "Why is she hiring this guy?" Oh, he went viral. Still, and then she says, "Like she gives a good speech." Team. Yeah, as she to gives. Why she hired him? Well, she she indicates it beforehand uh, about the team being mediocre and yeah. this, you know, and this then she gives winner. she gives a great speech. Yeah. Uh, at the at the press conference about like but you're all here yeah. and i've watched this team a lot nobody here has seen this team as much as me they're mediocre and this guy has something that they don't a trophy from the last 10 years or something like that you know it's like she makes a good point and she really slays it because he comes in very cheerful yeah. and he's answering questions and being nice and then when it comes out like apparently nobody knew that he didn't know anything about right. they knew he was an American. Right. They knew he was an American football coach. Right. They apparently didn't know that he didn't know anything about UK right. football. So then, when they realize, they start tearing him apart. They're shouting. They're shouting questions. Do you even know what this is? Do you know who who won thing? And he's just being like, "Well, I know. I don't know the answer to that." And then she cuts him and is like, but the- "Apparently, forgotten all her manners." And she gives that great speech. Her stated plan to bring him in as a bit of a spectacle. Mm-hmm. Because A, it gets people's attention. Mm-hmm. He's a viral thing. He's a weird choice. Right. It gets people, it'll get some butts in seats. Right. But also, because she's like, hey, he also has cred that, you know, of, of a kind. Right. And we're trying something different and I'm shaking things up. And she gives this very convincing speech that even if that was her real reason, it's a bit 
cynical it's not the word i'm looking for i can't think of it the, this choice to be like i'm gonna bring this guy in and he's gonna create a sensation yeah. and maybe the team will it's, also get better it's still almost believable as yeah. her reason i went like oh okay i guess that's the reason but there was part of my brain that was like that's not a great reason there was something in my mind that went uh, you know when you get writing in a show you get an explanation for something that's like not that good and you right. go okay I guess that's the best I'm getting and you just accept it but you're mm-hmm. not happy with it right. but then when she gives her real reason you're like this this makes sense this right. this ties everything together when she tells yeah. uh, this was the only assistant. thing my ex-husband loved and yeah. I want to run it into the ground yeah it's like all of a sudden it really because she's very polite and yeah. and kind and, and nice to Ted when she first meets him. She's very like welcoming and like oh, it's so nice to meet you and a little weird about the yeah the tea thing. But I love he's not. But he doesn't pretend. He doesn't choke it down and go oh it's great or whatever. Yeah. He's like you know I always thought tea would just taste like hot brown water, and I was right. This is terrible. No thank you. Yeah. <laughs> but he doesn't he doesn't spit it out. Yeah. Neither does he spit it out and go. You Brits and your fucking plant water. But he also doesn't go, well, yeah, it's great. And then choke it down. Yeah. He just goes, wow, no thank you. Okay, well, let's talk about something else. Yeah. Also, a- I appreciated his little mochaccino or cafe latte. Any any coffee, as long as it doesn't taste like there's even a hint of coffee in it. Yeah. And I was like, that was me 10 years ago. I want... I want- Oh, he's just like so relentlessly positive. Yeah. Even though he does express negative emotion. I do not yeah. like the tea. Yeah. But it's still, he's positive and so he's just gentle like, and kind wow, of. Wow, I definitely don't care for that. Well, anyway, moving on. I, w- I want to go back to the presser though, because like oh. that that scene. We're forward where, to the presser. Where, the tea came before. Yeah, but then I, we were I, I know, I'm, the, I'm just. Uh, I really love this pilot. The When he's getting grilled by the press and they're all jumping on him one after the other and he's kind of trying to answer and be his positive self and it's just yeah. like building and building and building. And then um, he like takes a sip of the bubbly water and spits it out again and everything. It's like all of that could have been really, really cringe of of that style. It's absolutely constructed like that. But the reason that it's not cringe is because of two things. One, we actually love this character. Yeah. And we, we don't want to see him hurt. Like I'm almost like, leave him alone. Yeah. Leave Ted alone. (laughs) You guys. Leave Ted alone right now. Stop it. Um, yeah, I got it. I just, I, I, I wanted to be, uh, wanted to be a uh, Chris Crocker a little more. Sorry. You just wanted to be in the moment. Be live, in the moment. live in that Chris Crocker moment. All yeah. right, I uh, allow it. But watch yourself, counselor. <laughs> but it's like, you know, leave him alone. And then the way it's shot and edited, it's focused more on his pain in the moment. Yeah. Than on our You're feeling about it. Instead it's, of feeling like, oh, cringe, this is so awkward. You're like, oh, buddy, somebody help him or something. Yeah. And then you feel positively towards Rebecca, even though she's kind of the bad guy in the scenario. Mm-hmm. Because she does a good thing in that moment. Yeah. Nobody is, is 100% good or bad in yeah. this. Like, I mean, the, the players all seem kind of like, the, what the fuck? But yeah. But I, I suppose they're reasonably skeptical. That one guy who, uh, with a with a very dramatic face, who was like, "Yeah, I've had a great career. Never thought I'd end it being coached by Ronald McDonald." Like that that guy is like, "Okay, fair enough. You had a great career. You already knew your career was not doing doing as well as it had yeah. in the past, and now the the owner of the team pulls a this? bullshit stunt, yeah. which of course he's gonna assume this is just some garbage stunt, yeah, as Rebecca thinks it is, yeah, like." And he's like, are you fucking kidding me? So I, I understand why the team is a bit like... Skeptical. Skeptical. But nobody like does anything really cr- horrible to it. No. Even when the... Even when um, Fuckboy... Uh, excuse me. What do they call them in the UK? Is it Roy is the... Uh, Fuckboy. Fuckboy. Fuckboy in the UK as well. They don't have a whimsical name. Like, you know... I, I believe I don't know. Fuckboy is like the UK... Originated in the UK. Did it? I, that's where I first heard it. I went to a fringe show called Fuck Boys for Freedom. Oh, okay. It was about the quest for the golden snapback. Oh, sure. Uh, Sounds like a fringe show. Yeah. He, uh, he had to team up with the wizard friend zone. It was a whole thing. Sounds terrible. But anyway, uh, what is it, would that be? Um, uh, that He wouldn't be a chav, right? A chav is more like white trash. I mean... Would that be a chav? Is that is that high chav fashion? 
No, because chat. Chabs are more likely to dress as like a like a Ch- gangster. Chabs right? are, yeah, but I mean, Chab is like specifically a um a derogatory like that's a poor person. Definitely a um it's a classist. Well, it's the UK. so is it's, white trash, but right. you know, I've 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 always heard it described as Chabs basically means you know white trash. But also, my knowledge of like Chab fashion and uh, style is probably ten years old. Yeah. Uh, from the last, you know, whenever was the last time I saw a character who right. was described as a chap on a British yeah. TV show. But anyway, that guy, even though his whole thing about like, oh, I gotta go, do you want me to stay? It, it was, it, it, it indicated that he thinks a lot of himself, mm-hmm. but he wasn't actually being that rude. He wasn't like, yeah, I'm sure you're about to make a cute little speech, but I've got more important things to do. Check out this hottie I gotta h- go hang out with or whatever. Like... He was a little dismissive without being actively rude. Yeah, he was dismissive in a way that felt like he he didn't even realize he was being dismissive. It wasn't a power move to, like, show this stupid American right. his place or something. It was just like, oh, yeah, sorry, were you going to do something? Do you want me to say? He did say, like, oh, no, should I stay? And he's like, no, no, go ahead. You're fine. Yeah. Just saying hello. Yeah. Anyway, it just, it, 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 it again, every scene I saw in my mind's eye, how it could have played out on a show I would enjoy less. Yeah. And it was just a treat to see it play out so much better. This is actually a lot like Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Yeah. I felt similarly, like, pleasantly surprised and kind of de- delighted yeah. by by everything in, in the same way. Although, I would say that this has a much stronger dramatic hook. Like Brooklyn Nine Nine yes. is definitely like we gonna have oh. shenanigans. Oh yeah, and they had to, you know they did they had to do the procedural thing. They had to at least tip their hat at we're yeah. solving a case here. But with Ted Lasso, I mean, all they did in that uh, as much as they did, yeah. all they did in the episode is establish the characters. Um, kind of we got uh, the kind of some personality motivations, and we know what the show is about, and we got a little bit that Ted is having some. Uh, family some problems at home yeah well worse than that i think i think his wife has said i want space meaning like i'm leaving you yeah i just we don't we don't have the specifics i I was just being vague because we don't know the specifics all we know is that he called home he at least had a good conversation with his kid yeah when he said hey i love you buddy he's like or, or no, he said, you know, "Yeah, I love you too." Yeah, that's right. That that's right. The... That was better. Yeah, he was like, "Hey, I miss you." Yeah, I, I love you too. And then I was like, "Okay, so this isn't a, like kid doesn't have time for dad, or like they don't have a good relationship." That coupled with how the conversation with his wife went makes yeah. me think things are a little, little more intense. Yeah. Because his kid said, "I love you," unprompted, which. I mean, for a kid, like based on the we age don't know of how the, old are the, the kid, kids. there was a photo. Of, he was looking at a photo on his uh, his cell phone yeah, lock screen. Know. It was like, I mean, the kid looked like ten, like younger kid, like ten, eleven. Oh, I I miss I remembered it as younger. Yeah. Like six, seven. Oh, okay. Well, it was, yeah, it was definitely not a kid who would be old enough to. I don't know. Yeah. Now I don't know. I, I I I took the the kid said I love you unprompted to mean. They have a good relationship and the kid cares about his dad. Not to mean, like, the kid is saying this to comfort his dad because he knows things are bad. Oh, I guess well, it could go either way. Yeah, I mean... That's not how I read it. The, the way the conversation with the wife went, and also it's just like, it's clearly the first thing that has phased this guy at all. Yeah. I mean, But even when he says, hey, Michelle, I love you. Pause. I, I know you you don't have to say it. Yeah. It was like, even then when he's like, hey, I'm just letting you know I love you. And also, I'm acknowledging you do not have to say it back. Right. I'm not saying it to get you to say it back. Right. I just wanted to tell you. It's like so healthy. Yeah. But clearly he is just like. Yeah, he's still. I was wondering when we saw the picture of his, uh, of the, what appeared to be wife and kid on his phone. I went, wait, he has a family? And then he had a drawing that was like, I love you, daddy, or something like, like good that. Good luck, daddy. Yeah, good luck, daddy. There you go. Good luck, Daddy. That could have referred to anything, but I read it as this child did this for him. Good luck, Daddy. Like, good luck in England. I'm a very small child. But it, that could have been from another, from any game of his career as a coach. So, yeah. Uh, but 
Yeah, I think that the I think the message we're supposed to get more from the conversation with his kid, it was supposed to be more a contrast between the two conversations. Yeah. The hey buddy, how you doing? Oh, okay. Oh, I miss you. I love you. Oh, I love you too. You know, is it great? And then oh, is your mom there? Uh and then, you know, uh the the hey, okay, yeah. Well, go to your nice little neighborhood. It's kind of a superficial yeah. conversation and then that tense ending. It was just supposed to be like his kid said, I love you, I'm prompted, and he got to say, I love you, too. And then he said, I love you to his wife, and then he's not getting an I love you back. I think that was supposed to be more of a contrast than than that the conversation with the kid was supposed to tell us anything other than good relationship with kid, yeah. not good relationship with mom. But yeah. I guess we'll probably learn more about his uh, his family and the rest of the show. But mm-hmm. yeah, I... Uh, God, yeah, that was, a, that was a real gut punch. And then when he goes, when he turns off the light and gets in bed, and our little last button on the end of the episode, it wasn't even like, it wasn't like a big crazy joke to be like, sorry, we had that heavy moment. Here's a big crazy joke. Yeah. He just closes the, he turns off the light and goes, well, now I can't sleep. He goes, he goes, shoot. Shoot. <laughs> and I, in a show that has had people like, there've been like several f bombs, like there's yeah. been some like, some high level cursing. Yeah. His worst potty mouth thing that he says is shoot yeah and i was just like no why are people mean to him (laughs) oh please never speak to me or my american football coach son again (laughs) and that's the first episode of ted lasso yeah such a strong pilot yeah oh god and very little expo log right yeah, it's we're learning about characters through action yeah. and, and, the, and behavior. Yeah, what, and the, what they say and the way they say it without anyone saying... Yeah, we don't even know how long uh, Ted and Coach Beard have worked together. Yeah. They didn't work in something about, like... How well, long have we been friends? Yeah, exactly. Uh, nothing like that. But the little... You learn everything you need to know about how they work together. The yeah. fact, first of all, the fact that they're going together to England to yeah. do this crazy thing, and the, the the way that Coach Beard does not even flinch at all of of Ted's like weird yeah. little quirks and silly things he does. He takes it completely in stride. He seems a little more maybe normal, <laughs> a little yeah. more like r- reality based, but at the same time like. Yeah, he doesn't. He doesn't act like he's like okay, that's nice, dear. Like he doesn't yeah. act like this is some weird goofball I've been saddled with that I've just learned to deal with his crazy shenanigans. He genuinely seems like when he says, "Hey, if you know the thing about if we we see each other in our dreams," yeah. his response is, "You got it, stranger." Like yeah. <laughs> it, I get the vibe from him that, I mean, if if I was told to come up with a headcanon for it, it's like he's somebody who is recovering from a very dark place and Ted got him out of it. Like he's like Mm. a recovering alcoholic or, or something, you know, like, yeah, something really dark. And Ted was like this relentlessly positive force in his life that got him, or, you know, like his entire family died saving his other entire family from the wreckage of a burning battleship. You know, it's like, there's (laughs) some sort of, it just, there's the vibe I'm getting from that character is that he is holding on to Ted actually really hard yeah in his own way that that he has a reason to be stuck with ted i don't think it's just that they have work history but that's just my read on it Um, yeah well that's why i was saying like i feel like that conversation is almost all you need to know about their relationship the facts of their relationship whether he you know uh ted lasso found him in a ditch and raised him up or something like that it's like Brought him in like a like a st- straight this dog. Coach Beard raised him from a pup myself. <laughs> yeah, like I, it, that almost is. I mean, not to poo poo your head cannon, but I just I almost feel like it doesn't matter. I'm sure we'll get more information later, but I feel like all you need to know in this episode, at least, to start the show, is th- this camaraderie that they have. Yeah. and it's, it's a very sweet camaraderie. Like yeah. I, I ship it. I love it. It's, it's great. Well, should we get into our first segment? <sighs> I think that we should. Where did the money go? This is the segment where we talk about where the budget was spent. The where was the what did they splash it out on something big? This is kind of your baby, strangely. So, uh, where do you think all the money went? You know, honestly, it was that uh, that one uh, reporter's hair. 
damn, that guy had huge oh, yeah. hair. That like lion's mane of hair. I gotta look that guy up before we get to the that guy's segment because yeah. he looked very familiar. So the guy the reported me. from the Independent. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but in, in all seriousness, uh, I. I think probably a lot of like outdoor location shooting stuff. Like yeah. in that big state, that's a large stadium that yeah. they're splashing out on using. Also, a uh, so lot of locations. Yeah. And presumably, uh, I mean, the uh, probably the press room, yeah. the owner's office, yeah. his apartment, those are all recurring. Uh, mm-hmm. will be recurring sets. Yeah. We didn't get to see where Co- Coach Beard's accommodations, right. so that's one thing they avoided. But, like, I guess that's not that many uh, for a new show, but, I mean, a lot of new shows, they, it's pretty much, like, one set that's clearly going to be recurring and then mm-hmm. some other basic, you know, yeah. one-off sets or something like that. So Probably Did... that custom snapback, wouldn't you? <laughs> all, those, all the outdoor shooting, probably. And, the, yeah, having the... the Having to shoot people who know how to play football playing football also. Yeah. Like, you can't just have a bunch of actors running around. They have to be... Probably some of the players on the team also actually are... Footballers. Footballers. Yeah. That took me a second to remember. It's not... They don't call them football players. Also... Just shorten that word. Shout out to that opening credit sequence. I actually... I thought that was really cool. It's, it was I'm him blanking. him sitting in the stands and the seats are changing color. Oh. So that it spells out Ted Lasso on the seats. I didn't even get that's what was happening. <laughs> but uh but it's like it's him sitting alone and the stands that he's sitting in keep getting keep camera keeps getting farther and farther away and he's just all by himself in the middle of this like giant field of empty seats. And I just I thought that was it was really beautiful and evocative especially given where we're at emotionally by the end of the pilot. Yeah. He was kind of like, oh, look at him, he's all by himself. And by the end of the pilot, I was like, oh, somebody go sit by him. Yeah. Oh, buddy. No, that, uh, that makes sense. Well, moving on to our next segment, which we like to call... Clips and Chips! In this segment, we discuss any uh, theoretical cliffhangers that we think might be coming up, and also any ships that we're having for characters on the show. Sort of hoping people get together or become frenemies or whatever. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Sarah, what, what do you predict is the first season cliffhanger for this show? Like, what's the big oh, reveal? Oh, God. Okay. Um, okay, I've got two things that would could happen, like, in the last few minutes mm-hmm. of season one to be like, how's that going to affect season two? Okay? I've got two, okay. two things I'm going to throw out. Okay. Um... Ted's wife shows up and she's not what we thought she was or something like that. She's like a totally different kind of person than we expected or something like that. Yeah. Or Ted and Keely smooch. Just throw on hmm. two out there. That could be totally like, whoa, I didn't see that coming. Kind of, I don't know that this show's going to go for that kind of season right. ender, but you know, that's what this segment is. I, those are really good. I wonder if very late in the season, possibly the last episode, He's going to find out why he was actually brought there. Ooh, that's better. Yeah, yeah. And I, I almost think dramatically, you know, obviously they're going to be like building to the big game. I feel like the big game, you know, the big match. Yeah. Big match will be coming up. And maybe he'll find that information out right before he goes out. Yeah. And honestly, like, that is something that I think could break him. Like, you know, just in terms of his relentless positivity, it's like, if he really gets into it and thinks he's doing a really good job and then he actually does succeed and then he finds out that he was brought on because he's a total joke. Yeah. And no one, the, the person who hired him doesn't actually value what is clearly he's really good at. Yeah. But that, I, I could see like if that was delivered the right, the wrong way yeah. to him, that could really break him. And it's especially like dramatically, I think it would be really, really interesting and beautiful if like the team goes out and the team wins, but he's He's broken. Oh, so then God, season be two good. becomes like people trying to fix Ted. Yeah. T- Ted, first season, Ted fixes the team. Second uh-huh. season, team fixes Ted. That would be pretty good. Yeah. I mean, the second season is out already, so people listening to this may know how uh, right or wrong we were. But I, I mean, it could go all kinds of ways. From yeah. 
Well, there's so many times we've predicted a season cliffhanger that happened in the second episode. <laughs> like, how often has that happened on this show? Like, it, it, it's hard to know. It's almost impossible sometimes, especially with modern shows that are less likely to do, like, a lot of filler episodes, and then all of a sudden, big thing at the end just to mm -hmm. get people to want to watch yeah. the next season. You have a lot more, like, big things, ups and downs happening throughout yeah. seasons these days. So, you know, might, might be totally different. His wife could show up in the second episode. So, speaking of uh, smooching, you mentioned Ted and... Strangely, this is so sunny. <laughs> We're recording. <laughs> you mentioned Ted and Keely kissing as a possible season one cliffhanger. Yeah. Are, is that because you ship it? No, 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 not really. I mean, well, also, we just don't know really anything about them. Yeah. Uh, their characters yet, hardly. Um, or at least whether, you know. And there was no, like, it wasn't flirty or anything. She just went right. like, oh, this guy's... A this guy's okay. He's a sweetie. He's I, harmless, at yeah. least. Uh, but yeah, no, I just was trying to think of what would be a good... I was trying to answer the question in the true spirit we originally conceived of it. Like, come up with some kind of wild cliffhanger that they might throw at the last episode. I... My general prediction around ships yeah. is that his, his wife is going to... He is going to be functionally single as the show goes on. Because mm -hmm. I think giving him some kind of romance or potential romance, probably something fairly cute. Yeah. Uh, it just seems like he's the kind of character that I think would be very attractive just because of, like you said, he's harmless. He's so sweet. He's yeah. very genuine. Uh, and honestly, the arc that I want for season, multiple seasons, is Rebecca. I want him to be this, like, just like, she's just like, she's... She She's he he so... just melts her yeah. icy heart. <laughs> yeah, because she's just like she's clearly been like really wronged. Yeah. Oh yeah. And she's also she is not she's not behaving in a healthy way. No. But and having they... that character kind of have this like arc of like I don't know just like being charmed and won over. Yeah. Not, no, I doesn't can necessarily see that. have to like they don't have to like smooch and get together, but just yeah, like no. her, her being redeemed would be. Lovely. Well, they make her really sympathetic yeah. in this episode. It would have been easy to just make her a, an evil bitch, a yeah. cold-hearted bitch. But, like, she has very good reason for for behaving the way that she does. Yeah. And we even find out by the end of the episode that the way she treats Higgins... Even it, her being mean to Higgins yeah, is like, he was complicit. Yeah, well, like, she's kind of mean to Higgins and she kind of messes with his head. And you think, like, oh, she's that kind of bitch who messes with her, you know, her, their subordinates' heads and doesn't respect them or whatever. And then in the end, she goes, like, I know there'll be some things about this whole scheme that might be uncomfortable. Because he's like, I don't know if I can do it. I don't want to ruin this guy. He seems so nice. And she's like, yes, it might be a bit difficult, but surely no more difficult than shuttling women in and out, you know, of, of our home behind my back all those years. Right? And he's like, oh, yeah, I did do that. Yeah. I am not, I am not blameless here either. I don't know. They made her... So much more sympathetic than they could have. I want her to still succeed. I want her to have what she wants, but not at the expense of the rest of the team and Higgins and Ted and everybody else. Well, I, I mean, I would argue that the team suddenly becoming successful, perhaps wildly successful. Yeah, is would actually be a better... A, a better fuck you to her ex-husband because yeah. in all the years that he loved the team so much, they never did really that well. Yeah, yeah. Honestly, yeah, you're right. No, she could still win, but also everybody else. Everybody could win. Yeah. There's a scenario where everyone could win. If the team and does well, is... she's not screwed because it wasn't like some kind of insurance scam, yeah. right? It was just to to mess with her. Ex. That is the perfect con where everyone gets exactly what he wants. What he wants. Also, uh, you know, the best revenge is living well. That sort yeah. of thing. I mean. What better revenge on her husband than to improve a team that he cared about and failed? Right. Just before we end Cliffs and Chips, mm -hmm. I just want it on record that I friendship Coach Beard and Ted. I love them. I just want them. I just want to see the two of them being friends forever. Now it's time for a segment that we like to dub. What will this show be? This is the segment where we predict 
what will be the day-to-day vibe of the show? You know, what's the the episode-to-episode slog going to be like? Is it going to suddenly pivot into a procedural and Ted is uh, solving mysteries? Probably not. Yeah. I think this one's definitely going to be more, I mean, more more overall season story. Mm-hmm. I feel like every episode is going to have a main thing they're dealing with. In this episode, Ted doesn't understand driving on the other side of the road. Right. But like mostly it's going to, everything's going to be in service of a greater story. Mm-hmm. I'm doing this sort of rainbow gesture to indicate the arc of the season that you guys can't see. But yeah, it's all the story is going to more serve the overall thing than to have some some thing they do each episode yeah this definitely feels like a show where we're getting a five hour long movie presented in 30 minute chunks in a manner of speaking then a then a the one where they the one where they kind of a thing so i just i i'll never get over how much we did not see it coming that lost girl was going to turn out to be (laughs) Oh, and, she was going to become a detective in the second yeah. episode. Like, they do not set that up in the pilot at all. No. I mean, it works. You go, oh, yeah, actually, it's a popular format, and it really does work for this. There's a reason for it, and yeah. yet, we did not see it coming. Now I'm always ready for, like, any show. Much like, uh, for a while, I was like, is this show also named after a main character? I mean, this one is. Uh, but I, like, joked that Longmire was going to be named after the main character, and then it was. There you go. I definitely was like, I'm wrong about this one. This one's going to be the county he lives in. Nope. Totally the main character's name. Excuse me, Mr. Mister Longmire is my father. Speaking of individual characters, it's time for a segment called... Hey, Dad. In this segment, we talk about people we recognized. Wow, that was a very... <laughs> Uh, late night TV type of introduction. I, I get. <laughs> we we talk about that guys. Yeah, that, character that actors guy. that we go. That, that, oh, that it's guy. that guy, right? That's no, the thing. No. That's the premise. That's what we talk about. Now, I immediately recognize Higgins. Uh, is a the mm-hmm. the owner's assistant, and it was driving me nuts the whole episode. And then I looked him up, and the first thing that came up was that he's on Downton Abbey. And I went, wait, that feels right, but I haven't actually seen any Downton Abbey. Why does that feel right? It's because he played basically the same character on Gosford Park, which Downton Abbey was sort of based on. So that explains it. Um, he, he's also in uh, the, a, the, a miniseries based on the book The Moonstone. Um, by Wilkie Collins, and I was recognizing him from that as well. But yeah, did, did you recognize anyone? Uh, two people. Mm-hmm. I mean, obviously, Jason Sudeikis is... Uh, oh, yeah. He was on some comedy show for a while. I, I never heard of him. <laughs> I think it was like like Friday Night Taped or something. Some yeah. Sort of something. yeah. Friday yeah. Afternoon Taped. Uh, but Hannah Waddingham, who plays Rebecca... The, oh, yeah. The, the, uh, the owner. The owner. Uh, she's in... She had a recurring part in Game of Thrones. Uh, but also, she had a fun little bit in The Hustle. Have you seen The Hustle? No. I've seen know... Hustle, but not The Hustle. Do you know what The Hustle is, Sarah? A dance craze from the 70s? Well, yes, but also... <laughs> Sarah, The Hustle is a... Uh, it's Dirty Rotten Scoundrels. It's Dirty Rotten Scoundrels, but with women. With yeah. Rebel Wilson and... Um, Annie Hathaway. Annie Hathaway, yeah. It's excellent. <laughs> Annie Witcher Hathaways. Uh, but yeah, so it's just kind of like, oh, okay. I, I, no, I, was like, yeah, I, know I remember when the trailer yeah. came out, you were like, Sarah, we must go see this. And then we didn't, we didn't. But I saw it at some point and it's a lot of fun. Yeah, didn't that come out like right? I think it might have been in theaters when pandemic happened. Or no, yeah. was it older than that? It was, it was a... It was in the four months leading up to it. Yeah. it sort of at that during. I blame time. everything I didn't get a chance to do in the pandemic. That's why I didn't see Star Wars A New Hope in theaters, actually, uh, when it came out. Yeah. Because of the pandemic. Yeah. That's only a reason. very reasonable explanation. Well, remember, I, what, I was like gushing over Dev Patel and the Green Knight, and I'm uh-huh. like, hopefully it'll be safe to go into a theater by the time this comes out and we can go see it together. Nope. Anyway. Uh, I also recognize Brendan Hunt, who is... Coach Beard. Mm-hmm. Uh, he has done a couple of bit parts on Key and Peele. So he's kind of like... Oh, he's shown okay. up in some sketchy sketches. 
And he's kind of like, he's also a TV writer, but he's shown up in kind of a lot of uncredited little sketch appearances. He has, on, he has that shows. vibe. Yeah. Writer who does, often does small yep. on-screen appearances. Yeah, it's just like, you know, we, we need someone who looks like a serial killer van kind of guy or what, you know, like, <laughs> he's kind of got the scraggly beard look, but like, yeah. could kind of go either way with it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, we need, quick, we need an extra hobo. We need hobo number five. Like, oh, get, get Nick. I love that song. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Yeah, Brendan Brendan Hunt is great, and then um, Nick Muhammad. I can't remember ever. He's the one who plays Nathan. I can't mm-hmm. remember ever seeing any of the credits that he's in, but he's sort of kind of had a. It looks like looking at his credits, it's like I've definitely seen his face in like some comedic productions and things. Looks like he's worked with Steve Coogan a few times and things. So it's like another one of those faces. It's like okay, I've I've seen you. Yeah, I've seen you around. <laughs> You're it's a thing a, I've seen before. It's a uh, that guy. I'm not imagining you right now. The other person who's driving me nuts is um, that uh, 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 the journalist who stands up and he Ted uh, compliments his hair. Yeah. Um, I did. You know, it didn't actually occur to me to wonder, like, oh, is that guy going to come back? Because of all the journalists who make comments, he's the only one who, like, stands up. Yeah. Amazingly, I saw him in two things in short succession. He's been in other things I may have seen. He did an episode of Midsummer Murders. Whether I've seen it or not, right. could be, you know. But I think I'm. It's the reason his face, well, he has a distinctive face as well. But he was in the movie The Bookshop, which I just watched within the last year and a half. Uh, and the TV show Agatha Raisin, which is... Terrible, and yet I watched more of it than I ought to. Anyway, uh, yeah, I just I saw him in two British things, in, in short order. So, do not hey heads up, don't watch the movie The Bookshop if you don't like bleak. That movie is bleak in an extremely English way. Well, let's move on to our next segment, which we like to call I Choose You. And this is a segment where we pick our favorite character who we just adored and want to see more of and want to see them flourish and thrive. Coach Beard, honestly. I mean, other than Ted. Ted is a cinnamon roll. But I feel like the main character is almost off limits in this. It just seems yeah. like too much. And for me, it's Rebecca. Really? I just, okay. I yeah. want, I want more fair. of her because... it. Like, the actress is clearly having such a blast, like, playing this, like, ice queen, yeah. like, cold hard bitch character. But the show has already given us a lot of sort of backstory and pathos for her. So it's not yeah. just, like, she's mean for the sake of being mean. Right, yeah. Like we said, she's more, way more sympathetic than they had to make her. Yeah, and I I just, like, I'm just imagining, like, a lot of really funny, co- like, character combinations. Like, her interacting with Nathan more. Yeah. Because, like, he tra- Nathan walks into the room and then sees her and just, like, immediately yeah, loses his voice and Yeah, he says, I'll introduce away. you, and then walks in and just, like, panics and runs yeah. out. And I love when Ted's like, hey, and Nathan tries to come back in and is like, nope. Yep. <laughs> back yep. out again. That was a great little background moment. So, like, the effect she has on people, but then maybe seeing that sort of grow, like, she yeah. wants to connect with people more or something like that. Because, uh... Yeah, it's like even the amount of interaction she's having with Higgins or whatever, the her toady. It's mm-hmm. like, why is she interacting with him so much? Like, doesn't she have friends? Like, isn't there anyone she likes? Like, she actually feels very isolated in terms of sort of her emotional landscape. And so, I'd love to just see more of her growing and interacting with people. Yeah, it it could be really fun. Yeah, no, I I completely agree with you. My gut reaction. Her favorite is is Coach Beard. He's just so great. But also, yeah, I guess if if I'm answering the question, who do I want to see grow and thrive and flourish, then yeah, Rebecca, for sure. It would be be so disappointing if we watch the rest of the show and she just gets more and more cliche ice queen. (laughs) It's such a bummer. Yeah. Don't do that, Ted Lasso. Travel into the past. Tell the writers of Ted Lasso not to do that. I want to find out if that... um, Sorry, topic change. I want to find out if that clip of him doing the ridiculous dance, as well as the viral clip, was that from those commercials or bumpers or skits that you were talking yeah. about? Because if it is, that would be a great way to kind of like, remember this? That's what yeah. we're doing now. Because some of those did definitely go viral. Yeah. I did not watch them on ESPN. They yeah. were 
emailed to me by my dad or whatever, you know. Like you <laughs> but there would be such a great way to tie that origin right. into the show by being like, okay, we did some funny videos with this guy and they went viral. Now, what if those funny viral videos were the reason this show is happening? Yeah. Huh? What's real, man? Yeah, it, that's perfect. If it's true, that would be perfect anyway. <laughs> we'll find out. Jason Sudeikis, I just saw Jason Sudeikis host SNL recently and he is so good at funny bad white bo- like white b-boy dancing <laughs> like, like you have to be good to dance bad on purpose yeah yeah in the way that he does and he is really good at it you know i while you've brought this up i want to apologize publicly to jason sudeikis because i said at the beginning that i was like yeah it's some guy i don't think much of like oh yeah that's the one like i don't know what i saw him in that gave me such a bad impression of him my impression could be totally wrong. I could be thinking of a different person. Or he could have been in something that I really didn't like. But clearly it's not his fault because this pilot was freaking delightful. And he was delightful in it. So I am over the moon to say I was totally wrong about Jason Sudeikis. Which is a great lead-in for our... Final verdict. Did this pilot do the job of a pilot and make you want to watch more? Oh, yeah. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Uh, we could watch the second episode as soon as we hit stop. It, yeah, I, I am just, I'm like glowing with how much I enjoy this pilot. Like, yeah. I usually don't feel this way after watching a TV show or watching a movie at home. Like, this is usually how I feel walking out of a really good theatrical show or a mm-hmm. music concert or something like that. Uh, a music concert, you know, unlike those, uh, oil painting concerts that yeah. I attend sometimes. Yeah, all those dancing concerts. Yeah. Uh, those beatboxing concerts. <laughs> <laughs> well, then I hope we never read this marquee. <laughs> I just, like, I feel like I just watched something really good. And I, I know that it's not because my barometer is off because I just watched some shit because we just watched Jaws earlier yeah. this afternoon. Like, we watched one of the greatest movies of all time. So for me to be like, I feel like I just saw something good and surprising. Like... I I don't know sort of, you know, where they would take it from here and how episode two and three kind of fall out might d- determine sort of my ongoing passion for it. Mm-hmm. Um, but this pilot was so strong. I kept waiting for a moment where, like, Ted was going to break and you were going to find out he's, like, secretly a shitty dude. Yeah. Or, like, he's running some sort of con. Or that he's, like, on some kind of medication. Some shitty yeah. storyline like that. Didn't you hear? He had a horrible brain injury. Yeah, something. yeah. And now he's just relentlessly positive. But don't say the word, you know, Mary go around or he'll spiral into a crazy frenzy and then someone says it and he starts throwing shit or whatever. Yeah. You know, th- there's so many horrible things they could have thrown in and they didn't. Yeah. And we thank them for that. And so, you know, I, I, uh, my parents are getting Apple Plus for the winter season and I'll probably check this out. So we do not, we do not endorse Apple Plus, but that is where you can watch this show. Yeah. (laughs) This, this and a Tom Hanks with his robot friend. So that's the, that's the other thing coming out this holiday season. There's a, there's a movie coming out with Tom Hanks and a, a robot and a dog. They go on a road trip. You could be making this up. And I would think you were hilarious, but I feel like it's possible that you're talking about a real thing. And that's just the way life is sometimes. It really is. Ain't that just the way? (laughs) Thanks for listening to Pilot House. You can follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Pilot House Pod. Visit our website, pilothousepodcast.com, or email us at pilothousepodcast at gmail.com to suggest future topics. Please share this episode with a friend or rate and review us on Apple Podcasts. It helps people find us. Our podcast is entirely listener supported. So thanks to our special guest stars, Cynthia, Tina, Juniper, and Jerry. Visit patreon.com slash pilot house to find out how you can become a series regular. Pilot House is a Herringbone Society production. (laughs) And on that note... On that inscrutable note. Bye! Bye.
think that went well. Yeah. <laughs> Somehow we always get to the bye, and then I go, oh, God, we, I'm so tired of doing the bye, but I feel like we have to do it. We always walk into it, and then I'm like, ugh, it, it, people are tired of this, and we always find a way to do something different with it. Yeah. Well, maybe not every time. Because we're good entertainers, Sarah. Yeah. Yeah. Gosh. <laughs>